The next place you'll see that is on my face. All right, people, I'm Garrett. This is Making Movies, and today I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way on how to load C-Log, specifically C-Log 3, into any Canon DSLR or mirrorless camera. That has generally been reserved for the high-end DSLRs, high-end mirrorless cameras, and of course, the line of cinema cameras. So if you have other DSLRs, they're entry-level, they're mid-level, they're older mirrorless stuff, uh, you don't get that option built in. Log, for those of you who aren't familiar, is a super flat, kind of gray, hazy looking way that we can film footage. It looks really bad right out of the camera, but it does a lot for us in how how we can use that footage in post. Whether it's dynamic range, what you wanna do with a color grade, or just general color accuracy, log gives us more color information because of how flat it shoots than shooting in a standard picture profile. I know that the entire industry is kind of moving to mirrorless. That being said, a lot of you either still have DSLRs laying around or are not yet at a place where you can kind of push to get the really nice mirrorless cameras. Shooting in log is a way to get so much more out of your camera than you otherwise would. Even on a little camera like this. This is the Canon EOS. M. I got the body for $150 and the lens for uh, just under $100, so $250 all in. I got this little camera, and when it was released, it was notoriously bad at shooting video. People didn't really dig it. That said, I got this because I can load in 2.5K RAW. There's a link there for you on how we did that. I thought that this camera would be a pretty good test for this because it's pretty low quality video. And so if I can get more out of this camera, if you have something that's a better camera, obviously your results will be exponentially better than mine. I wanted to test the dynamic range of shooting in log. And I then also wanted to look at the color accuracy of, especially of like skin tones. Fortunately, unfortunately, we're in the middle of a polar vortex here in the Midwest. It's like negative 40 degrees outside, snowy, it's wild. But that's really good for a dynamic range test. So dynamic range is the amount of light or the stops of light that we have between being completely crushed out in the blacks all the way to being completely blown out in our whites and highlights. That area of light information and color information between those two is what we would call dynamic range. And when it's snowing outside, we have really good contrast and dynamic range. I'm not gonna get into the science of color grading or the art of color grading in this video. That can be another topic for another day. Basically what I've done with all of this footage that you're going to see is I have just colored it to match the color of Canon standard. Standard is the default Canon color profile. If you're going to be shooting photo or video and you don't adjust any of the settings in the camera, standard is generally what it will be on. It's a very high contrasty, very high saturation, and very over sharpened color profile. As kind of a baseline, I wanted to use this first. So this shot here you can see that there is this tree branch where there's kind of the dark green of the evergreen and then of course the snow in the street and the first thing I did I expose for the tree here I do have some color definition here in my tree it's not that great you can kind of see some of this over sharpening happening the snow I can only tell that it's falling when it's against the backdrop of this house across the way but everything in the street is completely blown out all of the snow on the rooftops is completely white there is no color information in that snow. And because I exposed for the tree, I lose all of that information. Now, vice versa, if I were to go through and expose for the snow so I could see the nice detail in the snow, I would lose all of the information in this tree. The tree would go completely black and silhouetted, and that wouldn't be what I'm going for for a shot like this. The next picture profile that you have is neutral. Now, this is generally where people who haven't loaded anything into the camera will live. Really all it's doing is it's just knocking down the oversaturation, the over contrasting and the over sharpening and kind of going with the camera's kind of base levels. So you'll see here, the image is a little softer. Again, we kind of pulled out some of that over sharpening that was done by the camera. This camera again is notoriously soft when shooting in its default settings. What you'll notice here is down at the bottom, 
uh, where we kind of have this snow drift happening here next to this mailbox. You can see that actually a little bit more of that snow comes into frame here. With the slats on the side of the building, I get a little more definition in what's happening there. That's because we don't have the oversaturation happening. We don't have the over contrasting happening. So I'm getting a little more dynamic range out of the camera just by switching it to neutral. The good folks over at Technicolor have made a camera profile for Canon cameras called CineStyle. Some of you have probably heard about this. It's free. It is a pseudo log camera profile that gives again a much more flat looking image. When we get into this here and you see what CineStyle looks like, again, we actually get a little bit more shadow detail underneath this tree here in the background. We start to see some definition here coming from the shadow off of the front of this house. We get even more information in the front here in this little snow drift area by the mailbox and our tree is starting to look a little better. But really, if you look at the vinyl slats here on these houses, you really start to see some detail come through on there. If you look at this little snow drift here in the front, you'll start to see that it really kind of gets pixelated around the edges of it. It's because it's really trying to pull a lot more of that information here, probably more than it needs. This is what we would call highlight roll off or a lack of highlight roll off. These highlights are, are clipping in a pretty ugly way, but compared to standard and even compared to neutral, CineStyle gives us a lot more color information. Now the C-Log3 picture profile that we're going to be comparing this against isn't free. James Miller has done a bang up job making a replica C-Log3 camera profile for Canon DSLRs and mirrorless cameras that so closely matches real C-Log3. On a commercial shoot we did, we were shooting with C300 Mark IIs and I had a 7D, no, what was it? 6D Mark II. I had a 6D Mark II that was out in the field. It was just like a BTS offshoot kind of C cam setup. And I actually was able to cut some of that footage in with our A cam footage, color it side by side, and nobody could tell the difference. Pretty unbelievable stuff. I believe that it's uh, 25 euro, so 30 American, give or take, whatever, adjust accordingly. Well worth the investment. And you can see here, even when compared to CineStyle, we look at this snow in our foreground and it just has a different kind of roll off. We don't have that insane white clipping, right? There's a little bit of color in our snow. We can kind of see detail across our street. And again, the slats on the vinyl in the background of the house, we can see all of that stuff, but it doesn't look as crunchy as the CineStyle does. That highlight roll off or the way that we interpret highlights looks much more natural while maintaining that same dynamic range. The other place that you can really see this is when we start to look at the snow on top of of the tree branches here. You can see that our standard, it kind of gets to white and gets really crunchy and sharp right away. Not a whole lot of definition and detail. Neutral gives us a little better. It's kind of soft, but it's something. CineStyle's where we start to see the green come back in our tree. It starts to look a little bit more believable and we're getting a nice gradation on our snow. But again, you can kind of start to see that pixelation on that gradient there where it looks a little bit too crunchy. I don't think that's the right term for it, but that's the only way that I can describe it. And then if you look at the C log, we're not really clipping in our snow. It has a smooth gradation. We're maintaining the green in our pine and compared to the other three, it looks the most real or, or filmic. Then here again, you can kind of see what I'm talking about with the snow. Standard, it's pretty much entirely blown out. You can see a little bit of contrast there across the bottom. Neutral, a lot of that comes back. CineStyle, a ton more snow information there. But again, it looks like it's over highlighted, a little over contrasted and a little too crunchy overall. And then C-Log gives us something that looks the most like snow, the most how it would normally look. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to dynamic range. We are shooting with the same camera, but by loading in this other picture profile, we're now adding the ability to see more stops of light because the camera is doing less of the processing power in the camera and allowing us to do that 
in post. The next place you'll see that is on my face. Here we go, here's a, some test footage that I did. This is uh, shooting in standard here with this camera. It looks pretty fine. If all you're doing is like vlogging and that kind of thing, this probably isn't for you because the Canon color out of the camera is pretty decent. But if you're trying to do something that's cinematic or a little bit more polished, this doesn't give you the option to do much with it. It is kind of the look that it is. And if I stretch it in any direction too far, from a color grading perspective, uh, it really starts to fall apart quickly. Now you'll see here, neutral for a shot like this looks almost identical. Uh, it looks a little softer, maybe a little better above my eyebrow and below kind of my eye here, but it looks pretty close to being the same. CineStyle is where we're going to really start to see a difference. There's more color in my face. I have the ability to stretch this a lot further. The highlights look a little bit better. I have a generally better image out of this once I've colored it. You'll notice that my skin tone is a little blotchy. There's kind of these areas where it's a little green, a little yellow, a little red. It's kind of all over the place, depending on uh, where on my face you're looking. And then we get to C-Log, the C-Log 3. Again, this looks much more like my actual face. My skin isn't super blotchy. My highlight roll off looks really, really good. And when you kind of look at all four of them together, you don't really realize what the standard is lacking until you see it compared to something like the C-Log. The blacks are more rich, the highlights have more color in them, I look more like a normal actual person. And if you can't really tell a difference of how it's shot, this is what they look like straight out of the camera before color, and then this is what it looks like once you color them together. If you are in a space where you're using LUTs or you're trying to do some basic grading or you just want to make your footage look more cinematic and you're finding yourself limited, chances are one of those limitations is coming from a compressed format that is doing a lot of post work on your footage that doesn't give you the kind of control that you need. Here's a close up here on my eye that you can see a little bit more of what I'm talking about here. Standard, if you look in like the hairs of the eyebrow, there's this kind of bizarre over sharpening. And then there's kind of some chromatic aberrations that are happening above my eyebrow where you're getting some of this blue flecking. You get a little bit less of that here with the neutral, but that might just be because the image is softer overall. With the cine style, you can see some of this crunchy color that I'm talking about here on kind of the temple of my face. You're getting some of this yellow yellow blotchiness. And then with C-Log, you're getting less of that blue chromatic aberration. You're getting less of that blotchiness down the side of my face. And the color in my eye looks a little bit more vibrant. If you want to download CineStyle or C-Log 3, I've put links in the description below. I don't get anything for them. They're just resources for you to use. Now that you know why you would shoot in Log, let's talk about how you actually load it into your camera. This doesn't void any warranties. If you still have cameras under warranties. This is something that is intended for Canon cameras and Canon supports the ability to load in picture profiles from other people. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to this little website called Google. You're gonna type in the name of your camera followed by EOS Utility. Generally, it'll be the first one to pop up on the page here, but what we're looking for is we're looking for the Canon.com support for your camera. Canon EOS M, that's what I want. And then if we go down here at the bottom, you can see EOS Utility, and it has the build for the computer that I'm using and the camera body that I'm using it with. Not all of them are compatible with all versions of EOS Utility. This is the quickest and easiest way to make sure that this version of EOS Utility will work with the camera that you're using. We're gonna download this, perfect, love that. Let's open up the installer here. We then double click this. We say, yes, I want to open it. And then it's going to give us this little questionnaire about what it's trying to load. Yes, I see all of that install, yes, I agree. And then it's gonna go ahead and it's going to install all of that for you and we click finish. We will plug the camera into the computer, power the camera on, and then it should load EOS Utility for you. It loads up, I click camera settings. I then go to register picture style file. We then have our three user defined picture profiles here. I've already loaded both of these in here. I have CineStyle loaded as user defined two. 
C log three is user defined one. All you'd have to do to load these in is to click this button here. This will open up your browser window. You will then go to where you downloaded those earlier and you can load those directly in here. Click okay, they will load in, we click quit. And now we have those loaded into the camera. Now the menu structure on every Canon camera is a little bit different. So this might not be where it is hosted for you. But if I go into menu on this camera, I have loaded in successfully C-Log3 and CineStyle. So I have the ability to use either of those at will uh, whenever I feel like using them. And that's all I've got for you today. Again, you don't have to have a high-end Canon cinema camera or their high-end DSLRs like the 1DX Mark II or the 5D Mark IV to get the benefits of shooting in C-Log. If you can afford it, James Miller's C-Log 3 is 100% worth the investment. If you can't, CineStyle gets you most of the way there. But do yourself a favor if you are trying to shoot something that's more cinematic than just a standard vlog and don't shoot in standard. I hope you found this this video helpful. If you did, give it a like. If you want to see more stuff like this, hit subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next episode. This video is hacking this little camera with Magic Lantern to shoot 2.5K raw. The video below it, that's a video that YouTube thinks that you specifically would like.